Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the round room of the Mansion House for a very special night with the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Please welcome your off the ball host for the evening, Nathan Murphy and Ashling O'Reilly. A bit louder than that, can't we? <laughs> Imagine Amber Barrett is clear through on goal. What's your cheer going to be like? <laughs> That's a bit more like it. Absolutely. So in just under three weeks' time, Ireland is going to play in the Women's World Cup for the very first time. <laughs> and tonight we are going to be celebrating what is without question one of the greatest moments in the history of Irish sport. <laughs> Every time I go like that, you just get louder, okay? We're going to need quite a bit of that tonight. Do we have any Katie McCabe fans out there tonight? <laughs> we any Denise O'Sullivan fans? <laughs> have we any Ashling O'Reilly fans? There's still time yet. Where's Vera? Vera, still she's time still yet. available. She's ready. She's got the case. I might and get she the call. willing to travel. Fingers Unfortunately crossed. for you, Ashling, I just don't think it's going to happen. Keep the faith. Four Keep years' the faith. time. Uh, we are here tonight with thanks to Sky. They're proud primary partners of the Republic of Ireland women's national team, and they're calling on the nation to outbelieve and get behind the team this summer. <laughs> very, very good employees down the front here. <laughs> So just to let you know a little bit of what's happening tonight. So in a couple of minutes time, we're going to have one of Ireland's funniest men. He's going to join us up here on stage. Also later on, we have a massive Irish act. So you've got to sit tight for that one. It's very, very impressive, Nathan, isn't it just? Yes. Can't uh, wait for that one. Guests, you're going to be, you're, you're not going to be any rush home tonight mm -hmm. that way. Absolutely. And also we've past and present Irish legends are going to join us up here on the sofa for a chat as well. Uh, we have some empty seats up the front up here because I think we are missing a few special guests. Would anyone like to meet the Irish squad? <laughs> Will we get them in here to the round room at the Mansion House? So Vera Powell named her squad this morning. They are the players who are going to go and represent the Republic of Ireland in what, just over three weeks time, 80,000 people in Sydney. It is going to be quite an occasion and we're delighted to have them all, every single one of them, here with us tonight. So we're going to start with the goalkeepers. Woo! Courtney Brosnan, Grace Maloney, Megan Walsh and Sophie Whitehouse. Come on, get up, Bob. Get up and give them the standing ovation. And the defenders, Heather Payne, Anya Gorman, Nee Fahey, Louise Quinn, Harriet Scott, Diane Caldwell, Claire O'Reardon, Megan Connolly, Chloe Mustaki, and Izzy Atkinson. The midfielders, Denise O'Sullivan, Lily Ag, Kira Grant, Rusha Littlejohn, Sinead Farrelly, Lucy Quinn, and Katie McCabe. Marissa Shiva, Abby Larkin. You can take I'm, your feet. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be standing plenty throughout the evening. Get on your feet again. For Vera Pau Woo! and the entire Republic of Ireland management team. Woo! 
Comfy, everyone got a seat, yeah? Reminder, we are here tonight with thanks to Sky, proud primary partners of the Republic of Ireland women's national team. They're calling on the nation to outbelieve and get behind the team this summer. See, lots of people here ready to get behind the team this we summer. Do, we yeah. got a lot of clubs around, I think. Where are you from, girls? Where? Leicester? Leicester, Leicester. It's the earpiece, it's the earpiece. Anyone else? We got else? down here in the yellow. Port Marna, Corinne as well. Nice. We're all Northsiders at the moment. Ooh. Who we got down here? Ah, uh, Parkville, that's my club. Oh. Got the good crew in here now. Nathan knew that. Got the good crew. More here in the middle. Parkville. More Parkville. Oh, no. Nice. I don't know how they got Woo. tickets. I don't know how they got tickets. <laughs> Very good. Oh, hold on, hold on. Don't forget, there's more at the back. Home Farm. Home Farm. Woo. Very good. Bit of rivalry Ooh. in here. Jesus. <laughs> This wasn't in the script Friendly, at all. friendly. So uh, a lot of people to be inspired by these players. Of course, once upon a time, there were young footballers themselves who were being inspired. Mm -hmm. I do wonder what they looked like when they were young footballers, actually. I know. I do wonder Don't what Don't worry, they girls. Like. Nerv <laughs> you can feel the nervous. fear from here. <laughs> we're not going that far back, are we? So let's just have a look at this screen. Who have we got first? <laughs> Stand up there, Niamh Fahey, now we have a look at you. In all your glory, Niamh, stand up. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's a nice baggy jersey. It's a nice jersey, yeah. When was that? <laughs> <laughs> who do Who's we have next? next? <laughs> uh, Can anybody uh, guess who it is? Anybody? Megan. Megan. Stand up there, Megan Connolly. <laughs> Who were you playing with there, Megan? Sorry? Who were you playing with? Uh, that was the game at Cork. In Cork. Very good. Very good. What age were you there? 24. <laughs> 24. It was last year. <laughs> All right, who's next? <laughs> Anyone know who that is? Denise O'Sullivan. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's a good look. Anyone else? <laughs> Katie. Do we recognize her? Anyone? Stand we just get her there, up on Katie. stage. We just get her up on stage. I think Woo! we just get her up on stage. It's time now to welcome, without further ado, the Republic of Ireland manager, Vera Pau, and the Irish captain, it's Katie McKay. <laughs> Great to have you here. Vera, good to see you. Hi. Just before we start, I just want to say thank you to Mick O'Shea who provided those photographs. I think a lot of the girls will know Mick. He's Mick's provided. Be in trouble, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I think he's down there somewhere in the audience. So thanks a million to Mick because he does a lot of great work. So we appreciate that. Absolutely. So, Katie, has it kicked in? Finally setting in with all these people here tonight. You're heading to a World Cup. Yeah, no, it's been brilliant. Um, I think a few of us were kind of speaking about um, during the week, like when we were over in England or America, wherever we were, you didn't really feel the buzz yet, but once you land in Dublin, you meet <laughs> up with the girls, you see everybody. Um, yeah, the, the feelings kind of starts to creep in and even being here now, obviously seeing all the fans in Tallaght last Thursday as well in the Zambia game. Um, yeah, it's, it's really special. Um, but honestly, we're all so proud. The, the whole event, even today here, Sky, our sponsor has been absolutely unbelievable. In terms of the visibility as have given, 
young kids to be able to look up to the group of girls to look at their role models, you know, um, it's been fantastic. So, um, yeah, we're really um, delighted to have Sky being a part of this journey as well the last few years. Since you came back from the summer holidays and you came back to Dublin, have you found a road you're able to go down where your face isn't on the side of a billboard? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, obviously, like, that's, that's, it's, part, it's part of it. Um, we're growing the game through our sponsors and the work Sky and Cabri and stuff have done. Um, the FAI have pushed a lot in terms of getting more young girls kind of participating in grassroots. Um, so it's, start, it's not just at the top now, it's, it's coming right the way through, which is, which is fantastic. And obviously, we're very proud to, to be able at the to be at the forefront of that. Is your family and friends here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Just a few the, of them. The McCabe's have arrived. <laughs> Amber, what did they say? <laughs> <laughs> what an accent, Amber. <laughs> She's been working on that. But it means a lot to, to them as well. Obviously, your journey has been phenomenal the whole way up, obviously starting out playing with the lads teams and look at you now, captain in Ireland. So for them, it must be quite special too. Yeah, look, obviously it's, um, for all of us, we've, we've sacrificed a lot um, to, to be where we are today. We've had to move away from home, um, travel across the world to play. Um, and they're the, the choices you make to, to get to where we are today in, in terms of obviously going to a World Cup now. And um, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's just a fantastic thing to be able to kind of share. Everyone has so many different stories and journeys they've been on. Um, some smooth sailing, some not. Injuries, setbacks along the way. Um, but to have the squad here together now and, um, yeah, we can kind of kick on and look forward to, to next week then flying, flying down under. Vera, you've been able to make dreams come true over the last 24 hours for Katie, her family, for 23 players, for their families, for their friends. Mm -hmm. And the training players, I don't forget them. <laughs> How have you found us? Yeah. yeah, it was really hard a few days. Um, we've worked with our, our whole uh, technical staff really hard to get the best decisions. And uh, we think that we have the strongest squad, the most balanced squad. Um, and I, I think that we, well, we can do magic over there with this squad. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> It can have been easy as well. A few tough days, I'm sure, as well for the other girls. And I think it's important to, to mention them as well. You know, they've had a serious journey, and you mentioned setbacks, Katie, and I think that's probably an important thing. As a sports person, you'll get these setbacks, but it's, it's how you react and, and go again. Yeah, I've seen the, the statement of Jamie Finn tonight on, uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you've done, uh, seen it, but uh, please go on it and, and have a look at it because it's so mature, so professional, and uh, within one day being able to put that on Twitter is fantastic. And we welcome her in the, in the squad again. Absolutely, yeah. Big, a big applause for her. Yeah. And we, uh, we should not forget this. Um, there's so many people around us that support us, uh, and it goes years back. It, it goes uh, under the era of the, that Noah King was the, was the coach, or Sue Ronan after, Colin Bell after. Um, and this squad has, has gone through, through that all. Uh, we stand on their shoulders. It's, it's amazing what, what we've done. There's a few legends here in the crowd, and um, I hope that they feel as, as proud as we are, because uh, they started this journey. And I think that uh, we should never, ever, ever forget that, because we are now in the, in the spotlights, but without that whole journey, we would have never qualified. So thank you so much, everybody who's done that job in that. I'm sure, Vera, when you took the job, you had lofty ambitions and high expectations of what you could achieve. Are there moments you look back on over recent years that even your mindset changed, that you could achieve this, that you could get to a World Cup, key moments where you thought, actually, this group of players, there's something special about them? Um, well, we were absolutely sure we would go to European Championships. And uh, the system of, of qualifying is in that sense, that one game can change the whole, uh, our whole journey. Um, away in Ukraine, being so dominant, but losing with uh, an, an, an own goal, um, that was devastating. But there in the dressing room, with all the tears that we had, was, it was just one thing, this will not happen to us again, we are going to the World Cup. And Katie said we were going to the 
Afrin World Cup. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have answered it. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, that, that <laughs> power that was there in the dressing room, whatever happens, we are going to succeed now in this next campaign. And that power in that group uh, made us all believe. Uh, the, the, the staff was there, the players were there. And of course, there's all bubbles in that uh, in that journey, but I remember the, the press conference before Scotland, and they said, um, "Do you know that it's nine to two on the bookmakers? <laughs> and uh, what does that do to you?" And we were looking at each other <laughs> like, "Wow." Was it ninety to one? <laughs> yeah. Ninety to one. We joke to each other. Can we can we bet on ourselves? Because <laughs> we are going to win. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah well, we've never, I've never ever put any money on anything, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, we were so convinced, it was such a special evening, uh, we, we knew that we would win. Not yet how, we had, uh, we had different uh, scenarios, we had the, the strength. Um, but when Courtney, where are you Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> when Courtney saved... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story about Courtney, right? Go on. <laughs> and let us in. <laughs> it's a good story. You're amongst friends. <laughs> we'd been uh, we'd been practicing penalties all week in, in training and stuff, and we all had to take a penalty and this and that. But obviously, uh, Ian Bellum, the goalkeeping coach, and the goalkeepers had been studying really hard in terms of the Scotland girls, who their penalty takers are, this and that. And I sit on the back of the bus, like at the, the very back, and I see right up the aisle. And we're on our way to, to, to Hamden, and I just get a glimpse of someone's phone. I wasn't nosy in the rat but... <laughs> <laughs> She was just sitting on her phone like that, so I looked and she'd been doing her, doing her due diligence on Caroline Weir and where she takes her penalties. And I just thought, Jesus, she's fucking prepared tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and... Thank God. <laughs> so she's, yes, yeah, so she, she's looking at the penalties and I was like, right, okay, Courtney's, Courtney's on one. That's obviously good for us. And then obviously we conceded the penal and I just thought, seeing Caroline Wig up and take the ball and uh, I was like, we've, we've got this. And we always remember we'd been, we'd lined up on the 18 yard box and the minute the ball left Caroline Wig's foot, there was like a sea of green shorts in the box ready to get any second ball, but Courtney just parried it out and there we were. And I knew that was going to be our night that night, but Courtney, honestly. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And, uh when you're on the bus and you're slyly looking at other people's phones, you get much, go <laughs> you get much gossip out of that. <laughs> there was no cricket over that night, but... <laughs> yeah, um, but it also shows the, the in-depth preparation that we had, and, and that is done to, to my whole staff. And I want to give a huge applause, because they are doing that big, big job behind the scenes. So please give a big hand, because without that, she would not have saved that penalty kick. And just in terms of the process to qualify for the World Cup, oh, like Joe, we were asked a few times <laughs> to go on air to explain it, and I ran away. I said, "No, no chance." It was it was so hard to follow the process of the whole thing. Was there times that you thought this is almost impossible to do this? No, like I think when you touch back on Ukraine, I think the level of growth we had as a team, and not forgetting that like horrible feeling of being so close to the Euros, that being our first major tourna tournament mm -hmm. potentially. Um, yeah, that instilled us for the whole World Cup campaign with a bit of fire in our belly each game. And as Ireland, you're always going in as the underdog. And honestly, we, we, we love it. Like, we don't shy away from that. Um, and it actually spurs us on even further. And when I think it was the draw in Sweden, um, we kind of were like, right, we just have to, to beat Finland. Um, I think maybe, no, it was Georgia before that, wasn't it? Mm. Georgia yeah. and then, yep. then Finland. Um, and yeah, that obviously the magical uh, night. Lily, Lily got ahead on the, I think it was a Megan Connolly free kick. And uh, yeah, it obviously put us into the, the playoff situation. And by that point, you're just like, we just need to win games, whatever it is. It was Slovakia next and we had to go out and win to bypass the first round. We'd done that. And then we were sat watching Austria, Scotland, um, ready to take either of them. Um, and then obviously it was, it was Scotland, so. Yeah, we, we don't really fear anyone, girls, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the great strength of this team. <clears throat> the higher the pressure, the higher the challenge, the more people think that you would collapse under pressure, the more they, they rise to the occasion and the higher achievement they give. It's, it's, I've never had a team like that um, in that sense. <laughs>
a huge amount is that, of that is down to you, Vera, as well, and the way you've approached the job and the way you've pushed them and wanted to test them right from the start with the sort of friendlies you were organizing, even up to next Thursday night, France coming to town, this huge occasion in Tala. You could have gone for a, let's get a nice little confidence boosting win, make sure we get plenty of goals. Maybe you'll get that anyways next Thursday night, but you want a test that is actually going to replicate what you get over there. At no stage have you just taken the easy option. I, I don't think you get uh, confidence of playing weak teams. I don't think so, because that always frustrates. I think you get confidence to play better teams and stand your ground and make steps every time you play a higher ranked team. Um, and that shows also that that gave, the, that gave the confidence because then you feel I'm up to it. If you win from a weaker team, you still don't know if you can face Sweden. Um, so that is why those few very, very high level teams we needed and then we combined it with uh, teams that we can uh, make the play. Uh, and I think thanks to all the work and, and I keep thanking everybody, but it is true. I'm, my face is everywhere, but um, it is about the hard work of people behind the scenes that make it happen. Um, Evelyn McMullen, where are you, Ev? Go on, Ev. Can you stand up, Evelyn? Stand up, come on. <laughs> she made it happen that every time that I said no, no, that oh we got now no, no, and she must have been thinking, oh what are we doing here? We will you not get the point. Someone like the weather. Come on, now that was. <laughs> that was <laughs> and then there was the China, stuff. and I said no, no, no. But then there was Germany want to play uh, closed door games. So China came back, and I said, great, Evelyn, China, and she said. What? I just called them off. What, what is this? <laughs> so by the time she must have got thinking, well, where are we going here? But we have got the absolute best preparation program that you can imagine. And I am, I, I know all the programs, ours is the best of the whole World Cup. So thank you, everybody, <laughs> behind the scenes. Can you talk about how important that is, Katie? Because Sorry? Can you talk about how important that uh, resources that you have available now? You're playing for one of the best clubs in Europe at Arsenal that when you come at international level, it's of that standard, it's driving things to a higher standard. Because look, as we know, it wasn't always the case. Yeah, look, we've come from really um, difficult places in the past. Um, I know the, the, uh, the strike back in, in 2017, and there was a, a number of the players in the squad that were there that day. Um, and it was a real low point in, in women's football in Ireland. But I think ever since that day, the bravery, the, the players shown, Emma Byrne, Steph Roach, John, you're leading the way um, on the day. Um, we just we were just ready for change. We knew we had such quality in the squad and players. Um, so that was the biggest turning point from, from that moment onwards. And I think over the last few years, it's been fantastic, uh, the relationship between the, the women's national team and the FAI, the support we get from the FAI. If we ever need anything, we've got it. Um, and we do, obviously, we, we come from all different um, kind of club um, environments. and. If there is anything we ever need, it's, it's, we're, we're looked after. Um, and ultimately, um, we even obviously, we got the equal pay deal back two years ago, um, which was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but for us, like, it wasn't, it's not about the money or anything like that. It's, it's about parity and it's about having an equal playing field in terms of facilities and pitches available. and. Um, staffing, analysis, everything like that in order for us to perform at the highest level. And um, Can I give you an example of that? That is really yeah. important. The night that, that uh, Scotland won from Austria, um, we were, of course, into two, ca two camps, Austria, Scotland, Austria, Scotland. And um, Scotland won, um, and we knew we need three scouts there, not one scout. Um, of course, Tom Elms went because he's the head scout for all the op uh, analysis uh, opponent. Um, but we said we need also one, just focusing on one team, Austria, just focusing on Scotland, because that moment is the key thing that we need. And th the penalty kick is just one of, th of the major things. Um, so usually you only send one, there was, and, and that will be a big, big debate. But now you need three, we get three. They jumped on the plane, they went there, worked through the night. The next morning at 9.30, we had the analysis in. The guys did not sleep. And um, we got all the details of everything that, that we needed. Uh, and that is just an example of what you say, uh, the, the analysis and the hard work that, that 
people do and, and the resources that we get from the management to make it happen and to be the support that, uh, that the players need at that moment. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing that what, what has happened over the last uh, period of time. Yeah, no, and it's important um, because it, it makes us not have to worry about anything else and what we can fully focus on is, is training, um, mm -hmm. being in a physical, yeah, the best physical condition to be able to then perform for, for Ireland and, and qualify for major tournaments. So, but it is, it's, it's a big thing to recognise all the players that have, have kind of been before us. Um, I know Livian, um, we've got a few legends in the crowd tonight, Emma Byrne. Um, you, could, you could name it, like, honestly, there's so many you could name, but without them kind of trailblazing the way, we wouldn't be able to be in this position we are today. Um, and again, w what, what we're doing right now is for the young girls here um, that hopefully will be sitting here one day. Mm. Yeah. And we're qualifying regularly for, for major tournaments. And what those players might have been able to achieve if they had that sort of support back Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. And one of those players is your little sister, Lauren. She's playing for Shamrock Rovers at the minute. Lauren, yeah. <laughs> She's a Rovers head with Anya and Larko. Is she here? She's here, is she? I don't think she's cool. No, she's she's cool. training. I think she has training tonight, yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, someone hot in your heels, Katie. <laughs> yeah, it, but th that's the thing. It's um, the, through the visibility now. Like we're playing on RTE um, regularly. We've got everyone's faces are around the country. Um, we're visible to young kids. That was never the case before. So you've got young girls now being able to look up and have female role models um, and aspire to be a professional footballer one day. And um, yeah, I'm hoping Lauren can can follow in my footsteps. Absolutely. It it is incredible how quickly that has turned around female role models. We did a show, I think it was just before COVID, around 20 by 20, and we had a dozen Irish sports stars in the room. I think Louise might have been there that night as well. And we spoke about, we asked them who their role model was, and nearly every single one said, Sonia O'Sullivan, because she was the only Irish female sports person that they were seeing on TV at a regular basis. Where here we are four years on and we've 23 in front of us we've another 50 that we can watch week in week out yeah look it's fantastic i think um we'd been in um the high performance gym in abbottstown and we ran into the the irish women's cricket team here who were just off to I, I don't know what exactly tournament it was but uh they're off to play and um, but it's just engaging with women's irish women's sports stars is is fantastic i ran into ellen Keane as well who was going up to prep for the olympics next year and um it's fantastic. I just think the back and we kind of give each other within women's sport um, is, yeah, is an unbelievable thing. I think it's quite unique compared to the men's side of things. Um, and we just want to see each other do well. Um, and I think, yeah, that's obviously a really important thing. Yeah, it's definitely drastically changed. But for you growing up, who did you look up to? Uh, Damien Duff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can imagine you as a manager being a bit like Duffer. <laughs> I like him to be yeah, fair. Yeah, 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 that, that. He takes no shit. Yeah. Uh, we should point out, of course, uh, it's not just uh, young Irish boys and girls that you're inspiring. Uh, it's the entire Kardashian clan as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was random. I didn't dare. Uh... So that is Saint West. So that is Kim Kardashian's son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mustn't have any uh, jerseys left in the shops. <laughs> Did you ever hear from them? Never heard from them, no. Kim didn't DM me around. <laughs> Not yet, when you win the World Cup. No, yeah, um, no, it was, uh, yeah, my phone was, I didn't go, I was supposed to go to that game and I didn't end up going and my phone just started blowing up and I didn't know what the, what was going on. I thought I'd done something <laughs> or something, but, um, yeah, it was gas, but, uh, yeah, I'm wild. glad he's a fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vera, there's, uh, there's a lot of love for you in this room, in this country. I do worry that we might fall out over the next few <laughs> weeks because, the Irish were dreamers. We want to be told that everything is going to be great, that we're going to go and win the World <laughs> Cup. And I worry that you're too pragmatic around this and you're going to tell us to just calm down a little bit. <laughs> tell us we're going to win the World Cup, Vera. Well, I, w I wish I could say we're going to win the World Cup. We are. <laughs> we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Easy. <laughs> There's the quote. <laughs> deal. <laughs> yeah, deal. <laughs> Um, let's be realistic. It's the first time that we're going. <laughs> this is what I said not to do. <laughs> and, uh, we're just, we are going to make you proud, that's for sure. But we're playing the host nation, then we play the Olympic champion, then we play the best team of Nigeria. We will go through. So then we play the European champions, and they will not get the ball in. We will win with penalty kicks. And then we play the world, world champions. So easy peasy road. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah. We'll, we'll worry about the USA at the quarterfinal stage and we'll come back and we'll talk to you then and you might have uh, changed your goals. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, Vera, what did this mean for you? Like the ambition, I'm sure, as a, as a manager was to, to get to a World Cup. And I remember meeting you straight after the game in Scotland and you were just off the phone to your husband and, you know, you could see it meant a lot. You were very emotional at the time. What does it mean for you in your journey as a manager? Um, <clears throat> it, it means so much because of Ireland. Um, it meant so much more than the previous qualifications. And of course, it has also to do with this year, this difficult year, but the, the amount of support that we get, um, that I got from, from my players, the, they, it, you, they, you kept my back, how do you say that? We've got your back. You got my back. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt that from deep down inside, the management that has supported uh, me all through uh, the nation, the, the support, the, you, you all lifted me. Uh, and because of that, I could give my all to them. And uh, I think that that extra thing that came in, uh, at that moment all came together. And it's just unbelievable. Um, we did something that nobody had expected, right? Yeah. And um, I think we raised above ourselves and we, we, we just showed the world that nobody can beat the Irish. Hey. <laughs> You're going to stay on after the World Cup then, right? Right? Mm -hmm. You wanted to stick around after the World Cup, yeah? <laughs> you got the support. <laughs> Stayed silent on that. Uh, on the football side of it, Katie, then it is like 80,000 people. The first day of the tournament, Australia. On, it is a daunting prospect in many ways. No, we'll be well able, girls, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, look, it's obviously seeing the, the change of stadiums. I think originally it was a 40,000 and the demand. Obviously, there's a lot of Irish in Australia in Sydney, um, the demand for tickets just rocketed and yeah, to be, to be opening up the World Cup in Australia um, with these girls is going to be yeah, one of the proudest moments of my whole life. Um, the, the journeys we've been on have been teammates for years, it's, yeah, it's a fantastic feeling and I don't think it'll quite sink in until we get there and we're actually walking out together um, and yeah, going to, going to war with Australia. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to let you get back down to your seats. You've mm -hmm. given us enough time. We're going to get some of those legends you've been talking about up on stage as well to talk about the good old days. But please give it up for two absolute superstars, <laughs> Katie McCabe and Vera Powell. Well done. Good woman. Thank you. Our play. Oh, oh, oh. Well done, well Vera. Done, Katie. Thank Thanks a million. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you, Vera. Oh. All right, all right. Let's keep the show on the road. Mm -hmm. Next up, we mentioned them there. There are some absolute legends. It is 50 years this year since the Republic of Ireland women's national team played their first ever international against Wales. It's fair to say it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ever since then. But we do have three of the greats of the last 50 years with us. We've got two players who played that night. One of them scored a hat trick that night. And we're absolutely delighted to have Paula Gorm. Linda Gorman and Olivia O'Toole with us. Give it up, everyone. Woo! Thanks for having me. Good woman. Good to see you here. Done, Olivia. Good to see you. Lovely to meet you. Olivia. Everybody. Good to see you. Great to see you. Linda, nice to meet you. You stay. No, you stay. Grab a seat. <laughs> Jesus, don't have a row about it already. <laughs> We're only round because she could be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Is it nice to be here at an event like this? It doesn't happen very often that we're celebrating a World Cup. No, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a dream come true for us, like mm. uh, from where we started. Uh, they're an amazing bunch of girls, very grounded, very nice. Uh, I met quite a few of them and uh, we wish them all the best. You give them the seal of approval. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I, I think they're going to do very well. Actually, they've got a hard group, but I think I think they're strong enough to trust one another. They'll definitely come out of that group. I have no doubt about it. Mm. Well, Vera's got the analytics team already working on the quarter final against the USA, so I think they're uh, they're planning <laughs> in advance. Uh, Linda, can you talk about 1973, a first ever international for the Republic of Ireland, and what it was like? Well, it certainly isn't like this. <laughs> we had two guys that looked after us. We didn't know what an analysis was. We didn't know what diet was. Um, we barely had equipment to um, even practice. We play, practiced out in fields that you had to get buses to, make our own way. 
Um, great bunch of girls, absolutely great bunch of girls. I think we had one training session. We went across to Wales on a boat that we all paid our own expenses. Um, we had a, a bit of a windy day in terms of what you guys would call a game of two halves, where you had torrential rain, torrential wind, but we had a great centre forward. <laughs> <laughs> a hat now, trick. Louise Quinn would go apoplectic, but she knew the system we were playing because we were playing a two, three, five. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was playing, although I'm right footed, I was playing an inside left which meant that I had to support the ball going forward. But we had a great centre forward. <laughs> Scored three goals. Come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> now, there is debate among the, uh, the, the trailblazers, as we call ourselves, as to who passed the ball. But I'm taking credit for two of them. <laughs> <laughs> She's sitting beside you, Paula, so you've got to give her No, we had a marvellous team. It was a team effort. That's yeah. what I was going to know. Yeah. Can you remember the goals? No. <laughs> <laughs> they were that good. No, Lin Linda can. <laughs> yeah, I remember the goals. She remembers yeah. them. Because I gave a pass to my friend who was playing outside left, Catherine Rafferty, and she play the ball across for the winning goal. And you had to stretch for it. She literally had to stretch for it. Now, bearing in mind, you have to take in the conditions of the play. And we were playing against <coughs> the wind and torrential rain. Um, and got your foot to it. <laughs> Keeper didn't know where she was. <laughs> and we scored the winning goal. <laughs> How do you remember all this? Hmm? How do you remember all? <laughs> what? How do you remember it all? I, some things I remember. I remember some of the stuff that I do. Yeah, but I remember the, the five system because um, I got a bit of a shock when Suffragettes, which was one of the really prominent Dublin teams at the time, they were equivalent to the All-Stars that Anne O'Brien played in. Um, and I sort of remember it because of that. Yeah, we were playing yeah. against great players. <laughs> Olivia, do you remember your debut? I do, indeed. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, yeah, I, my debut was actually under Linda. Linda was my manager at the time. So we went to Seville, didn't we? And yeah. there's 7,000 people there. And I'd always remember the one Irish flag in the, <laughs> in the crowd. There's always one. <laughs> always one. <laughs> I was probably like a delegate <laughs> and anyway, sitting there <laughs> and um, walking out and just them screaming after the national anthem and then when they hear national anthem it was always like <laughs> we're there to scream but at the end of the day you were standing there playing for your country so the goosebumps is just all over you and I don't really remember much of the game but I remember scoring obviously but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember um, I received the ball at the centre circle and turned <clears throat> and I remember as I was about to shoot I got hit by a girl and a hit by another girl. And I got the ball away, but I went in. But I couldn't celebrate, I couldn't grow up because my leg was dead. She was at the uh -huh. coming in. And, but I didn't actually know the magnitude of that win. Because that win was the first ever Ireland ladies to win a, a European game away. And, so. and, and that still holds a record today because mm. that's about 32 years old ago yeah, yeah. and um, no Irish team I understand men or women have ever beaten the Spanish on home soil and here's wow. the wow. Wow. there you go yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, Fair, did you want another analyst for woke up <laughs> well that's why I'm dressed like this in case fear it might decide to pick me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one of the real things I remember about that game was Sue Hayden was in goal, and we had two centre halves, and one of them, she sort of lost a bit of zip towards the last few weeks, and I couldn't understand. Now, I had brought eight new players because I, I understood we need really good technical players, and Olivia was one of those except, exceptional players. Um, who liked to hold possession of the ball, who didn't panic under, who knew where the goal was, fearless, you know, 
unbelievably brave. But I, this particular girl, Angie Bates, played, she was actually a centre forward, but her first touch, she was, and she was like a rock, so I played her centre half. I didn't know at the time she was, she was three pregnant. months yeah. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so we have another one there, back. but the thing I remember, and I'll always stay in my mind, Sue Hayden was the goalkeeper. They were attacking us. She, won, she had the ball in her hand, and she hit it first time in the air out to the left. Olivia's running. And the only time I ever saw this move was in Bra the Brazilians do it. With the outside of her foot, she flicked it forward, and then you cut in. Mm. And all the crowd was, <gasps> couldn't believe it. Because <laughs> the only time I'd seen a move like that was the Brazilians. Yeah, you make me go red. <laughs> 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 Where did you learn to play like that? Yeah. Sorry? Where did you learn to play like that? The streets. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Sherry Street where you grew up. Yeah, I played in, on the streets for about 10 years. 12 be years. Before I got to a girl's. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I, you're right. You managed me, you didn't live with me. <laughs> <laughs> I know your family. I had your, your, your relation playing for me in the home yeah, farm. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, what were you saying? What was saying? <laughs> Where you learned to, 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 to make oh, the yeah, ball like that? Oh, um, yeah. We grew up in flats, and in flats you had um, your washing pole. So there was like five or six washing poles where you hung your rope for your washing. So we used to go out and pick a pole, and uh, you stopped the person from hitting your pole. If they hit your pole, you were out. So we used to be there till 12 at midnight, because... There was no way anyone was getting at my pole, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, in a street football or what, probably a player hasn't got today, not, not as much, I think, as passion. Because like, when you grow up on the streets, you're hard, you're brought up, you know, you play, especially I was playing with boys all my life. The first girls I played with was drunk on the ladies. And I was 16, they were all seniors. So I played with boys all my life. And I think that's where... I got the scale, I got the passion and the hunger to win because I'm not a good <coughs> loser. No, no, no. I'm, I just, I love winning the evening train and like I train girls now and I let them on to play, but I want to win. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I think it's in, I think a little passion and a little fight is in every single Ireland person anyway. But if you play a sport with that passion and the, the fighting, it comes out even more. So... Mm. <clears throat> I'm fairly sure that if over the next 10 days before you go, or maybe even over in Sydney and in Brisbane, uh, Vera, if you're looking for somebody just to raise the level of training by about 5% with a bit of intensity and a few tackles, <laughs> Olivia would have no problem stepping in. No bother, but no bother, Vera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Australia so you can call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised in a way that uh, you were asking uh, Linda how she remembered so well Paula's goals because yeah. you've scored so many goals for Ireland, nobody's quite sure how many you scored. And please don't ask me like, how to describe them. Or not, <laughs> <laughs> how many goals have you scored for Ireland? I have 54 official goals for Ireland. Uh, great stuff, girl, great stuff. And obviously, my debut, like, I'll never forget that, but I remember playing against Croatia in Richmond Park. I don't think, I no. think it was Noel King at the mm. time. And um, that was a standout goal because what Linda was just, just describing there, I can see that happened when I scored against Croatia. Um, Stephanie was coming in on the left. I was pushed forward then, because I was started off with left side of midfield and then I was pushed up forward and the ball came in, and I took it down on the chest, and I volleyed it in. At, and that's one goal that I would love to see on camera. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's, a, it's a goal that it was a well, a well factor for people, the 300 people that were there looking at it at the time, and my family. And it always comes back when we're talking about football, that goal. So that's oh, yeah. one. Yeah, don't even think of that. That is something you, you don't think of. There wasn't any cameras, there was no TV. So even for your family, did you have to ring home to let them know you won? How did they know even? Well, I, I, then games, air games, that's all 
that was there was family and friends. Mm. There was no social media to let people, as you know, there was no even mobiles then, I don't think. No. No, and so where <laughs> it was, was word of mouth. <laughs> you know, I'm the age now, Louise, don't you need? <laughs> and like we, just family and friends. So there used to be at least four to 500 there, if even, for like, a, a European game against Switzerland, against Spain, against Croatia, because nobody knew about the games then. It wasn't even on radio. So where did your ambition come from then to want to wanna go and play for Ireland? Because at this point you're saying you hadn't played with a girls team until you were 16 years of age. So how did you believe that you could go on and do that? Just from my uh, role model growing up was Steffi Graf, tennis player. Mm-hmm. You know, because there was, as you said, there was no women. And Sonia, obviously. But I just, I had a will to play. I wanted to play for my country. Because I grew up watching matches a day with my father at six years of age. Watching Georgie Best, watching the Irish men's team. Sitting there in 1990, watching David O'Leary. T- you know, uh, Paul McGrath, best game of his life against Italy. And I just, it was just, a, I wanted to stand up in that moment, um, for me national anthem to play. And I wanted to be in the green jersey. So I stayed away from all the riffraff. Didn't go out <laughs> weekends. Just stayed with friends that wanted to stay in. And sometimes I went there and sometimes I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we all that, need the That right, Linda, that right, Linda. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but well, then, at the me. end of the day, I always... My training was my life, my football was my life, and it's, it got me away from a lot of trouble. Obviously, Sheriff Street hasn't got a good name, but there's brilliant people in Sheriff Street. In Sheriff Street, it's a great little town. And <laughs> not, a lot, not an awful lot of famous people coming from Sheriff Street. Mm-hmm. Like Jim Sheridan, Wes Houlihan, like Kelly Harrington. They all were all around each other, Trevor Malloy. And every, like, so people, when you hear shouts, you don't be shocked about it. It's brilliant people, and Brilliant. That's where I got my passion from, to stay away from drugs, drink, going out the weekends. And that's why I think you do have to sacrifice an awful lot to get where these girls are today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think she had to sacrifice a lot in particular because she knew what? how I felt about football and my standards. And you were just ready, weren't you? Yeah, Linda. You were ready at that time. And she's never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> I just Paula, thank you every day. <laughs> no, no, no. I play down in Cherry Street now. Now can you imagine coming up for trials with it, the Dublin ones? We had no hope. <laughs> 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 we, we had the, the country girls had to nearly play among us to show our coach that we could actually make the Irish team because they always kept the ball. They were a gang. They were a clique. Will they not pass? <laughs> Pardon me? Will they not pass? No. No. Nope. <laughs> Not them. I did. But they two were, goals. Well, coming from my home, Dundalk, right, I have to say I'm very proud of my hometown and, uh, and what I stood for and how when I made the Irish team, they really honoured me at home. So, you know, that counted for a lot. I'd say, um, yeah. I'd say it was the first time I ever got a hug from my dad when I came home from Wales after scoring wow. the three goals. <laughs> the first time that ever. Proud. Yeah, yeah. It obviously meant a lot then for, for your family if he was to show something like that, if you said he doesn't always Well, if you had that six brothers and four sisters and none of them really played sports, so I don't know where I came out of, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, it was strange. I have a sister down there. I'd say she would know a rugby ball from a football. <laughs> 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 Dundalk's obviously such a great football town as well. Where did you get that passion from? Massive. Then? Just like the girls on the street. Yeah. Playing with the boys. I never played with girls. I never played with dolls or... I might have an odd gun or a pooch on me. On my head. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, like even at Christmas, it was a football I got. <coughs> and a gun. It was me. And a gun. <laughs> so you can imagine. And bangers. And bangers, <laughs> yeah. I, like, like what um, Olivia said, Coming up to the door, it was always boys called for me. You know, it's never any girls came up. They, were, they were, just weren't interested. And she'd have your real jumpers on the ground making goals and letting on. You just thought you were great out in the street. You yeah. know, but it went on to develop that that's where we learned our skills was on the street. 
to be honest with you. When you were playing for Ireland then, at that point, I think I remember you saying before that you had your family and stuff at that point and you were still playing. Was it hard to balance everything? I had a family. I actually played against England four months pregnant with my son, Carl. Wow. So there wow. you go. <laughs> oh God. Incredible. I, did, with, I, have to, I have to say, with the doctor's permission, you know, you were super fit then. And like what the girl said, you didn't drink, you didn't smoke. There were a lot of sacrifices, but they were all worth it. So Carl has an international cap. So he, so he claims. <laughs> <laughs> so he claims. <laughs> so he claims. But it can't have been easy at, at that point. To it be wasn't modeled. easy, no. But, uh, you know, um, I suppose my husband at the time, he uh, was very involved in sport and uh, he was very good at home with the kids. And when I would go training or uh, up to the trials, the only problem I had was the Dublin months. <laughs> you got a hard time here, aren't you? Well, well, to be quite honest, I always felt very sorry for the girls that had to travel. I did really, because <laughs> you're right, Linda. Because you're, there, you there's know, no express trains. Then. No, no express trains at all. But really, because they had to work, pay their own way, get up to train get back and go to work on Monday, mm, you know? True. So it was really, really tough, and it was all at their own expense. <clears throat> now, if you got injured, just tough luck. You look after yourself, that's the way it was. Whereas in Dublin, we were quite lucky because we would have had, say, Bo's physio on the side, would let, would, we could go in. For instance, I had um, a quads problem and just told me what to do. I went home, did it, and been doing it till this day. Because if you get an injury, I don't care what it is, you're, you're always going to be weak there, so you have to take extra care, right? <laughs> um, am I saying something that somebody knows? <laughs> <laughs> Amber saying something. You want to let us in? <laughs> what she say? Don't know. Can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was quite tough for the for the, the girls, country girls from the country. We're an hour from tall. Dublin, like. Mm. <laughs> but you're talking about girls. people coming from Galway and Limerick and uh, Cork. You're also talking about us going down to Cork to train, say, in, with, with the League of Ireland. And, you know, you're getting off to train and you're running up mountains to play a match and then you're running back down to get to train home. Mm. You know, it was quite crazy. But it, it was, there were just different times. Yeah. Look, we yeah. wish the girls all the best and ah, we're glad we done yeah. what we done. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the result of it down there now. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, it, one of the great things for this success is that actually people are now taking such an interest in what has gone before and how Irish football got to this stage. And uh, the passion that you have for this group. I was working alongside Emma Byrne the night in Hampden Park and like, Emma had tears in her eyes. Mm. Not in mm. any way of jealousy that she was yeah, missing out, but just in pride not. that her friends had managed absolutely. to achieve this. Mm. What's it like knowing that ye were the trailblazers, that if ye hadn't made the sacrifices ye made, we'd probably still be another 20 years from actually achieving this? All I can say is that the girls today deserve everything they've got from the FAI, from Sky, from whoever, all the sponsors. They're an amazing bunch of girls, Vera and our back group. They're wonderful, right? And I think there are room, there's still room for improvement, but what they've got, they deserve, 100%. Mm. Absolutely. You're pretty much number one supporter now, Olivia. I saw you outside Tala uh, last Thursday night. You don't miss a game? No. <laughs> 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 I'm going to the game since I retired, like, so. I was going to them before. They were playing in Tala, like Richmond Park and Talca Park. I always support, supported the girls. And what Paula just said, like, he says, are you jealous they're going? Like, to us. It's not, I, so many times I've been asked in the last three, four weeks, are you bitter, Olivia? And I'm like, bitter about what? <laughs> really, like, because I, I just don't understand why, why would you be bitter, what? Because we hadn't got, we didn't get paid, we hadn't got a nutritionist, we didn't, it wasn't all about that. It was just about playing for your country. And we, as Paula said and Linda, we would travel the length and breadth of the world to play for our country. So it wasn't about money, it wasn't about getting the right food, getting the right clothes, because I think I wore Palmer grass tracksuit for nearly 10 years, so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So 
It's not about bitterness, it's about being overwhelmingly honoured to be sitting here tonight and to know that these girls is going to something that just gives everybody in Ireland the pleasure of watching and going that I never taught me lifetime, I would. So I really want to thank you for that, girls. I'm going to mm -hmm. walk up with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, uh, Nathan, all you can call that is total progress. Yeah. That's all. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Total progress and, and truly deserved. Mm. Yeah. And of course, while they're having to train and do all the actual work, you're going to be just over there having the crack. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's cause <course> lie. <laughs> <laughs> Bondi Beach. Yeah. Oh, Bondi Beach. <laughs> Sofa's Paradise. <laughs> 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 Gonna have a ball. <laughs> have you been impressed with the girls and, and how they're playing? Oh, amazing. Just the joy to watch them. Mm. There's great strength and depth mm. on that team. You know, I know there's some disappointed people and um, disappointed players, but it's a learning for you. You have to, you know, put in a little bit extra, whatever you do. The only way I could explain it to you is I know how you feel because I was dropped in 1974. I wasn't dropped, I just wasn't selected. In 1974. <laughs> <laughs> Much the same in, thing. In 1974 <laughs> against Wales. You could have told I Vera that last night, it would have not been like <laughs> to use. Just to clarify, I wasn't born in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said she could be my daughter. Um, but anyway, I was, I was not selected in 1974, never forget it, against Wales. And I said to myself, I will do whatever it takes to play. I've played ever, I played ever since. I was never subbed. I was, didn't ever not start. Only because while other people were doing stuff, I was putting in the extra bit of work. You know, so you have to, you have to really want it. And I really wanted it. And like yep, Paula fighting. said, I played against men. I'm still playing with men. But we played with and against men to improve our speed, our th quick thinking, <laughs> and our, our, we were able to read the game a little bit better, you know, so because we had nobody. You have a whole crew that you can play against. And when you play against each other, it's just as hard as playing against another, another team. But what we don't have, and Vera touched on it earlier on, and she doesn't understand it, there's something in the Irish. <laughs> you know, there is something in the Irish that we do not let our bone go. And she talked about it on our post and, and not letting it go. We also had a post, but it's a little bigger than yours. But um, <laughs> we also had a post and we didn't, and ours was, you know, if you, again, if you, mm. you weren't knocked out, but wow. you'd had to switch and play, but you, you did all these type of things and you went where you, nobody else would go because you wanted to play. <coughs> now, I know what she was doing at that time. I know Olivia when she was playing. I, she was the first girl to be ever found out to be playing on a schoolboy side because they were so successful. The opposition objected because she was a girl and she was 12. <laughs> you know, I mean, I remember all that time. Um, and then with Paula, you know, you think that we just played football. No, no. I did an awful lot of cross training to make me better. She did too, but we never, we never told each other. So we were always trying to do, get a bit up on, on each other. Now for this crew that's going away, Vera, I don't know how you're going to pick your first 11. <laughs> they are amazing. It's going to be really, really, really tough. And, and, and could I just say... Uh, without, Here, I'll pick them for you. <laughs> <laughs> and could I say, without picking out anybody, just because I have an affinity with Home Farm, you can't. that Abby Larkin... No, no, no. I have an affinity <laughs> with Home Farm. I'm pleasantly surprised that Abby's in there because my crew are down there. <laughs> We're going to leave it there. I think everyone should get to their feet and honor yeah, these absolute legends of the game. <laughs> Paula Gorm, Linda Gorman, and Olivia O'Toole. Well done, good woman. Well done.
Well done. Amazing. Thank you very much, Paula. Well done, Theo. Brilliant. Linda, no, well no, done. That was brilliant. Good Thank woman. you so much. Olivia, enjoy Australia. Well done. Uh, we're just showing some highlights of the campaign uh, between interviews as well. We'll put that one on repeat for Lily uh, throughout <laughs> the evening. Don't go anywhere. We're not going to take a break. Our special musical guest is going is to pop warming up. up. I yeah. might take to the piano if I can get the singer a little bit later on before yeah. that. Who was it again? Abby? Abby Larkin? Abby Larkin will be up she for must a sing have the song later. All right, let's get our next guests up on stage. Yes, we're going to meet some of the family now. Very exciting. Can we call the one and only Amber Barrett up to the stage? <laughs> Along with her dad, Sean Paul Barrett, Chloe Mustaki, and her boyfriend, Greg Sloggin. Hello, Chloe. How are you? Good woman. How are you, Greg? How are you? Nice to meet you. Hey, Greg. Grab a seat. Uh, I guess there's only one place to start, and we might as well just get straight Over to it. For where now? It's with the knee. Go on. Let's play the goal. <laughs> Lisa Sullivan, little pocket of space to try and pick out a pass, which she does for Amber Barrett, takes it on her end step, Barrett for Ireland, into the area, toe push it, goal! <laughs> what a good one! Been the moment for Amber Barrett! And how appropriate that it's the woman from Donegal who gives Ireland the lead at Hampden Park. She drops to her knees. Ireland won, Scotland nil, a place in the World Cup within touching distance. The entire Irish team run to celebrate. Sean <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, how many times have you watched that? Uh, loads. <laughs> <laughs> you must be pretty proud. Ah, yeah, like, uh, of course. Um, oh, <laughs> Irish dad moment. Uh, yeah. oh, come on, you can say it, you can say it. <laughs> yeah, of course, like, you're, we're immensely proud. Like, I suppose, like, any of the parents, any of the families, we're, we're immensely proud of Amber. We've always been proud of her. And I suppose that was a special moment. Um, I suppose, particularly uh, on the night, didn't know whether she'd get uh, any game time. Then they just, they just seen her warming up and again coming on, like, and obviously the, the excitement builds. And I knew as soon as the ball was passed, uh, the wee Scotch girl never catch her. She's, she's, fast. <laughs> she's fast, you know. So, yeah, delighted. Did you think she had that in her locker? Ah, yeah, I'm watching Amber since she was a baby. She's, she's, that's, that, that's what she does, you know. Her, she gets the ball through. Um, she's very good at that there. She's fast and she, she's a good finisher. The Sean Paul toe poke, they call it back at home. Is that where she got it from? Pardon? The, you taught her the, the uh, toe poke? <laughs> no, I taught her how to kick the ball. <laughs> Do you call it a toe poke? Does everybody call it a toe poke? No, I think in school we used to call it the big toe. Uh -huh. I think we used to say bull toe. Uh -huh. Anyone else? Uh -huh. Yeah. Bull toe. No, toe poke. No, uh -huh. toe poke? Mm. The big toe. Uh -huh. Okay. Was I doing you a disservice there? Or was it a, <laughs> was it a big toe, bull toe, toe it, poke? Were you doing me a service with the commentary? No, this service with the, uh, describing it as a toe poke. No, no, I'll take it. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> How often do you watch it back? So my new year. <laughs> oh, here we go. My, uh, Sit them all down the first night and yeah, go, it's my, just. Yeah, my new year's resolution was to stop watching it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I got about 20, 20 minutes into the 1st of January and I was watching it again. <laughs> um, but like it's it's like what we said, it's like that moment, you know. I think everybody here, and obviously the girls at home, everybody wants to be the person that scored the goal that sent us to a World Cup. And you know, I've said it so many times that of course the goal was unbelievable and the accomplishment that came with it. But I think on the back of everything from Donegal the days previous, it just made it 100 times more important and more personal. And you know, I think not not enough people have said it in terms of how this team are as a group. And, you know, I can't say thank you enough to how the girls were, for me personally, over those days, how the staff were, you know, constantly checking in on the Donegal girls, because, you know, I think a few of us did know people who had been, you know, unfortunately affected, but the girls were excellent. And, you know, it just, 
it epitomizes everything this team is about. You know, it's not about ourselves, it's about everything else. And um, I just want to say again, in front of everybody, so you can prove it, that I said thanks to the guards for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Paul, what did that mean to the people of Donegal and obviously to the Creaselock families that were affected and all of the people that were affected by it? You know, sometimes in sport, those moments can offer that tiny little bit of, you know, hope and thanks in those times. As, I suppose as the country knows, it was a, an awful tragedy. Um, particularly, it's, it's something you see and when the you know, pictures were sent us about the, the explosion. Um, it's not something that you expect. It's certainly not something you expect in a locality that you know you're very familiar with. Um, and then to see the, the tragedy that unfolds, the amount of people that were uh, lost their lives in it, the amount of people that were injured in it, um, but again, l like a lot of things in life, and particularly with Irish people there, they're, they're very strong. It builds community. They're resilient. Um, I know a lot of colleagues that were attended the scene. Um, I know fire personnel were there, like, and, and particularly that the, some of the local people were there. There was, there was a, a lot of talk about a particular, about a, a, a digger driver that was there and never left for 24 hours on the digger to try and, and, and recover bodies. So it was a massive thing, like it's a massive thing at the time, I suppose it was poignant, particularly because of Amber, the association with her grandparents and being in, so familiar with Chrysler and being in Chrysler uh, an awful lot. And as Amber had mentioned before, her granddad, like, you know, it would have been taking them, the, the kids up to the, the post office and, and up uh, to get sweets and everything when they were little children. And, um, had he been still uh, alive, could, could well have been doing that that day for some of them. Um, and to see the resilience and to see the way that they, people have built up and come back and, and uh, it has united the, the community and, and brought people back and, and the, the goal was special, it touched them. Um, I suppose Amber's tribute to the people and, and the, the people that lost their lives it was uh, very heartfelt. Um, and it was, it was lovely for us too, like, because she's a, a lovely, a humble wee girl, and it was a nice touch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well And I think it was clear as well, Amber, from some of those affected in Creaseland, and some of the contact they had with you, just what it meant to them that you were able to take that moment to recognize them even with the armband. Yeah, um, I think that you know, coming into the game, we had been told just before that there was going to be black armbands worn. And I think that moment of acknowledgement itself was something very special to us. And um, I think then going closer to the game, we found out then there was also going to be a minute silence. And like something like that is also something, you know, very appreciative as well. And like, you know, we've t we talked about the celebration, um, my initial reaction to it, I suppose, as I said, you know, when the goal went in as unbelievable as it was, your, my mind obviously goes to something else. But you know, I've said it a hundred times. Um, I think for me, the most poignant thing about the whole thing was I think then Katie's reaction to me, because um, that's not something pre-planned. It's not, you know, you don't talk about it before if this happens. You know, and I think for Katie to take the awareness to see that and just to react because, you know, you know if that was any other moment, I think the <laughs> celebrations would have been a little bit crazier, you know, and um, I think again, it, it sums up this team perfectly and, you know, very unfortunately it, was something that we had to do, but you know, I 100% believe, and I think the Chrysler people and the angels in the sky were definitely with us that night. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Paul, I think I read that you coach some, some teams, I think you, a lot of GA teams and that you have in your day. Did yeah. you ever coach Amber? Yeah, Amber played for me now when she was young, all right now, and uh, I suppose some of my best memories are when I remember an under-12 game. Uh, so it wasn't you, Kira. <laughs> you wouldn't but, have been playing anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we remember we played, um, uh, it was a northern final, and uh, I, uh, Amber was playing, but her older brother Luke was playing midfield and t playing against a team that we... we uh, we should have been beaten well. We had already played in, in the league earlier in the year, and uh, we were playing at half time. Now we were 
kind of play, playing uphill the first half and the second half with the elements. We were only a point down at half time, like, uh, but at the start of the, the second half, uh, look, uh, one of the, 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 uh, the throw one kicks the ball up to Amber, just, Amber just goes away and sticks the ball in the net and the game's over, kind of basically. So, uh, very proud moment even from that, like, but I have a lot, a lot of proud moments from all the three kids, like, but Amber, particularly when she was younger, she used to, she was, took part in athletics. She started off the community games and a lot, a lot of pride from that there, what she was doing there, like in one in all Ireland's and then to taking part in cross countries and different things like, you know, so there's always been a wee bit of sport about the house. She's yeah. done all right. For sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chloe, you're going to the World Cup? <laughs> you! Yeah! <laughs> it, it appears so. <laughs> it still hasn't sunk in, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's amazing and I'm just honoured and privileged to be going with these girls because, uh, yeah, as Amber said, we're a really special group and yeah, I'm excited to see what we can do. How have the last 24, 48 hours been? Pretty intense, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> um, yeah, a mixture of emotions um, and we've talked about it a bit as well, but like the girls who didn't make it, unfortunately, so that's been hard because we were just talking about it earlier at dinner, like we've eat, slept, breathe in the same air for the past two weeks with, you know, those seven or eight girls who didn't make the 23 and yeah, it's really difficult, like we're all really good friends, so that was tough, but on the flip side, like, it's amazing for those that did make it and we've worked so hard and made so many sacrifices through our life to get to this point, so uh, I think we will all enjoy it at some point, <laughs> just hasn't sunk in quite yet. And it's important to, to mention those setbacks that comes up time and time again tonight. We heard Linda speak about it. Olivia mentioned it as well, that people will have these setbacks in their lives. And no more than yourself, you know, you've had quite the journey. You've had to overcome some serious battles in your life. So to be sat here today to know you're going to a World Cup after all you've been through, it must feel pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it just goes to show like how quickly things can change. I mean, I went from crying every day, January, February, when I was injured, couldn't get on the right rehab program, was on the phone to Greg, to my mum crying every day, like, you know, with the World Cup looming, you work so hard for something and then, you know, you can just get injured in any session um, or any day and unfortunately a couple of the girls have suffered that outcome in the past few weeks or, or months at their club, so... Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm lucky to be here and um, I'll just, yeah, I'll never forget yesterday getting, getting positive news. <laughs> Greg, uh, you're a footballer as well, League of Ireland player. Um, do you analyse Chloe's performances? Are you, are you giving <laughs> <To> feedback? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, yeah, of course. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go then. <laughs> we, have, we, have, uh, we have constructive uh, meetings after games. <laughs> um, but it's always positive. <laughs> um, nah, look, Chloe's, Chloe's been, been brilliant. She, she's been through so much adversity, as you've touched on. And she just keeps coming back. She just keeps coming back. And like, even as she said, she was injured there earlier on this year. But even up until three, four weeks ago, she's asking me to go and do a session with her so she can you know, get her fitness back up and work on her one-on-ones or whatever it might be. And that, that's always been her mantra, is, is, is to be the hardest worker in the room. And, and, and that's, that's stowed her well. And what's it like for the two years to balance? Both playing. Like I think I remember doing, we had a media day in the Castlenock Hotel, and I think he's had an hour off. And I think I remember you, Greg, coming to see her for that hour because maybe you don't get a, a lot of time when you're in camp. So, how do you balance it all? Well, Greg had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? What was that? Greg had no choice. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it comes from a place of understanding, you know, um, our situations. Like, it doesn't help that we have opposite seasons, but like you just enjoy the times that we do have together and um, like I think I'm quite supportive towards him and likewise and yeah, it's difficult, but like I'm not the only story, like you know, a lot of people move away from home and that's what gets us here. It's pure dedication, hard work for the good times um, and as long as you have a good support network, um, it makes it all that bit easier to keep going. There's so many different things going on over the last 24 hours, as you say, the close bond that you have as a group and seeing the upset, I'm sure, of those who didn't make it. But the other side of it, been able to ring family, been able to ring Greg, 
considering all you've gone through in your life, battling through illness, through serious injuries, even in the last six months, what you've outlined, what are those phone calls actually like when you finally get alone and you can tell, we've done it? Yeah, I think I was crying on the phone to him yesterday. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's like, it's just crazy what sport can bring. Um, so many lows, but so many highs as well. Um, yeah, like 12 months ago, I was working full time and now I've signed a professional contract. I'm going to a World Cup and it, yeah, I don't know, it's just, it's amazing. And I'm just so thankful for all the girls and all the staff and everyone who's helped me along my way, but we've all been there for each other and uh, it's just, yeah, it's amazing to be a part of this group. I'd say there's been a bit of crack over the last couple of weeks, Amber. Sorry? Has there been a bit of crack in the group over the last couple of weeks? Is it all business? No crack. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think now that I think that, um, you know, obviously I will say that I think it's fair to say from everybody, like the last couple of weeks has been very pressurised and as much as you're trying to enjoy it as much as possible, like you're, you know, you're... <laughs> Obviously, at the end of the day, you want to be there. You want to be one of the 23. But I think what is a very important factor of our team is that there's no bitterness about people. Um, at the end of the day, we know we go out to training and we just have to give our absolute best and then hope then when Vera makes a decision that you get the nod. But I think when you, you turn around, you look at the Zambia game, you know, if there was any individual performances, we'd not have been able to get a result in the second half. And I think we were able to do that. And I think, again, it's a, it's a, big, a big compliment now. So I'm, I'm hoping the crack starts to come now because it'll be a, it'll be a long month of summer if there's none. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who's been letting you down? Nephi. <laughs> <laughs> Under the bus, knees. <laughs> I think she's still raging the call. We got beat at the weekend now. So, uh, Have a look. That's what Mayo do to people. <laughs> and Sean Paul, will you travel now to the World Cup or what's your plans? Yeah, I've, I've flights booked anyway. <laughs> yeah, I booked it up. Yeah. So you're looking forward to it? Is all the family going? No, and that's, uh, I don't know. Uh, one of the, my sons is talking about going as well now, but uh, I'm not sure. He's, he's marking exams at the moment now, so hopefully he gets through that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, well, there's, a, there's a few family members going. Uh, all right. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Bit of a party, yeah? Well, I'll uh, have my own party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, you won't make it, obviously. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll have to have a stern word with the doc now and see. Yeah. <laughs> if we notice you getting uh, now a couple of handy yellow cards and a suspension to keep you out for a couple of weeks, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll all know exactly what's going on. Exactly. Uh, no, we have our own European journey, so that'll take the mantle from me, unfortunately. But I've worked out all the times and the games and... And you know, I'll be I'll be working out the phone calls as well. <laughs> um, so I'll be number one fan here. Yeah. Uh, oh, brilliant. Amber, you've already scored the most famous goal in the history of uh, the women's game in this country. Are you going to follow it up in a couple of weeks' time? That would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it's it's just funny though. It's, I'm listening to Olivia and she's talking about 54, and I'm like, geez, I have a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> so Vera, that means a wee bit more game time. <laughs> 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 no more. We promised Vera we wouldn't allow any begging up on stage from anybody for more game time. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant uh, getting to chat to the family and the friends and the boyfriends and all that as well to see what it means to you because, uh, mm. look, I'm sure you're incredibly proud of what Chloe and Amber have achieved and what all of these players have achieved. So thanks a million for joining us on stage. Yeah. Thank you. Good woman. Best of luck. Well done. Lovely to meet you, Jean Paul. Ah, you too. Well done. Chloe. Good woman. Thanks so much, Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Manny Chloe. Good man. Well done, Greg. Fair play. Right, I think we got a little bit of time for a few more. Our band are going to get warmed up. And uh, when we're done with these, they don't know it yet, but we're going to keep these next guests on stage. And we're going to get a few questions from the audience as well. So you can ask them anything. She's done it again. <laughs> Is that 202,000 times you've watched it now? Or? So if any of the players want to ask our next guest questions as well, we can give you the microphone. If there's anything we haven't thought of that we should be asking them, please do. Yes, we would love that. Feel so free. Get your thinking hats on. So we have, I was going to use the word veterans, uh, three of them coming on stage, but that wouldn't be Don't uh, do the that, appropriate Nathan. language at all to use. <laughs> three stalwarts <laughs> of uh, the Republic of Ireland squad through the years, uh, and three superstars uh, who've been there through the tough times, but are very much deserving of their place on the plane to Australia. Here she goes again. Hey. Hey. 
Nobody's going to listen to a word they say if that keeps playing in the background <laughs> is the problem. Please give it up for Denise O'Sullivan, Louise Quinn, and Nee Fahey. I don't know. Whatever you is like, Eve. yeah, go on, get go on. comfortable. Asher squeeze him. Asher squeeze him. Squeeze in. Squeeze him together. Well, I've got a slap for veterans. <laughs> no, yeah, it was not going to come up. <laughs> no, no. I was staying down, my knees were too sore to get up. That was <laughs> How are you feeling? Is it sinking in now? Um, yeah, listen, today has, has definitely helped that and I've family in the crowd as well so that'll just yeah that's you know oh, yeah? just enjoy that special moment yeah mom dad and sister are here Keep it quiet i think no, yeah there they are let's quit Pack family around viv yeah yeah are they <laughs> heading to australia they are heading to australia yeah. and my sister Sinead lives in melbourne so it's a double whammy really i think they're more going out to see her and then should they go watch the game <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah. an excuse uh it's great to have Denise O'Sullivan here. I'm a bit worried we didn't give her the appropriate introduction. We didn't have the pipe band that she now demands <laughs> everywhere she goes. This was last night. Oh, oh, I did it again. Oh, I do that to me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that was in uh, Nakhnahini last night that we're saying goodbye to you. Yeah, um, got home Monday, got a few days with the family. Um, they're not coming to the World Cup, so I wanted to, to get back and see them. And of course, they had to have something organised. <laughs> um, I didn't think it would be like that, to be honest. They shocked me, but it just shows what, what sport can do and um, how the community has showed up for me last night. And my family, have, they have such a massive impact on my career and they've done a lot for me over the years, sacrifice, so... For them to do that last night, they were absolutely buzzing with it and they were very happy and yeah, it was great to see. And uh, the pipe band have just asked us to pass on. They're more than happy to come into camp for the rest of the <laughs> Any day you want, they can play for a couple of hours. It's lovely stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Neve. How are you? How are you? <laughs> you all right after Galway at the weekend? Just about recovered. <laughs> This uh, is the Mayo man over here. Oh, yes. You don't want to get another. I, 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 I won't rub it in. I won't <laughs> rub it in too much. Uh, this World Cup, it's been a, it's been a long time coming for you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> you could say that. Uh, yeah, debut 2007 with the senior team. So 16 years wow. of, of trying to reach the promised land, play with Livy, and oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Had the pleasure of playing with Livy in Iceland 2008. Livy, I think close enough fight, uh, for the Euros and hadn't seen another similar situation since uh, the Scotland game. So a long time waiting and uh, yeah, thankfully now it's uh, the dream has become a reality. And even when we were speaking about the GA, you could have went down that road. You know, you're a brilliant GA player as well and you made the choice. You're probably happy enough now. You, you made the right choice. <laughs> made the right decision. Um, yeah, it's, it's great actually. It's great for uh, a lot of the GA players now to have a professional AFL career. But um, no, uh, like football, soccer, was, it was my game. And uh, yeah, I'm just so proud to be with this uh, group of girls and obviously the group of girls that were part of uh, the whole journey up to qualification as well. It's, uh, it hasn't just been about the 23, it's been a huge squad effort, so uh, we've been part of a fantastic group, so it's really proud to be here. It's a disgrace, really, that when they show Amber's goal, your little header beforehand always seems to get cut out. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gar, uh, our media guy, may have something to do with that. He said, he, he, oh. <laughs> he's giving me a bit of stick. He thought it just, you know, rebounded off my head. I said, there was a, a lot more finesse in that guy. You're not, <laughs> <laughs> you're not giving me enough credit here. Uh, Anya said she thought I had whiplash. Um, <laughs> close enough, but yeah, no obviously very minor part and it's all about this lady here and, your, and the Donegal person's big toe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and Louise, for you, like, what does it mean to, to your family as well that you're going to be going? Like they've been there the whole way through from the days in Blessington, the whole way. When you, when you started this journey, it must mean a lot to them. Yeah, that's it. They've, they've been all the way and yeah, I think probably they didn't enjoy that. I didn't actually get my driver's license until I was about 20 or 21. So there was some <laughs> extra years that they had to drive me here, there and everywhere. And um, yeah, they've been through it 
the whole way, getting yeah, dad out in the garden, probably forcing my sisters out in the garden as well and just belting balls at them and yeah, the endless um, <laughs> wash machine that has to go on and you know, dirty enough. I used to have a special section where I had to put certain trousers that I could only play football in because I wrecked every <laughs> single pair, like everything that you had. So they've always, yeah, every, all the little moments, all the, you know, all the games um, that they come to, it's, yeah, it means, you know, so much to me. And yeah, you know, you kind of, you do it and you try to achieve your, your dream, you know, your own personal dream. But, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm living it with them and, and, and doing it for them and just to make, you know, them as, as proud as possible. And was one of the dreams, obviously, was to get to the World Cup. Like, when you think back, growing up, what are your memories of Ireland in the World Cup? Is it Saipan? Uh, yeah, be a bit of, yeah, a bit of Saipan. <laughs> I was, um, yeah, I was born during the 1990 World Cup, so my dad went off my sisters to the pub while I was, <laughs> yeah, coming out. So, they, um, you know, it was, there, it was destined, you know. Yeah, my mom cursed me dad there now, but it was... <laughs> I've just realised what you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was, yeah, and then that was it. I think we have a picture of us in the, in the 94 World Cup as well, where me and my sisters were swinging around flags with my auntie and, um, yeah, and the same stuff. Then Saipan, I think I was actually... You know, well, we we were allowed in the pub, and I do remember watching the game. But yeah, it was only twelve, so we're all right. We were just having. Don't a mention soft Saipan drink. around the Cork woman. <laughs> <laughs> You've asked that question. Go. <laughs> uh, who's most likely to cause that sort of? Uh, we won't even go there. This is the night of celebration. Uh, you've obviously been uh, playing over in America, so you've sort of missed the last few months. You've been back and forth for matches and things like that. So you're probably just get coming to terms with how big this is now back in Ireland. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I've been over there, I've been kind of away from it, um, unfortunately, but um, coming here now today, just seeing everyone here at the event and our sponsors and just the support that we have, it's, it's, it's been surreal for a long time and um, it's really starting to kick in now, but to be going to a World Cup with these girls here, it's, I've known some of these girls half my life, it's, it's unbelievable, it's really special and we're going to go there and we're going to do the whole country proud and we're very excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking an awful lot tonight, Denise, about what it means and the historic nature of it and the inspirational side of it. It's going to come down to football matches, though, in three weeks' time, and you walk out onto that, that pitch, and somehow you're going to have to park all this side of it and the 80,000 people. How much are you thinking about Australia, Canada, Nigeria, and the challenge that they bring? I'm dreaming about those games. I can't wait. And <laughs> um, no fair from us. I mean, we're in a very tough group, um, the hosts. Uh, the Olympic champions, and then Nigeria, you know, the best team in Africa. So we know how difficult it's going to be when we go there, but um, we all have experience. We're all prepared for it, and no matter, no matter what, we'll go out there and we'll do our best, and um, we'll do the country proud. But, I mean, it's, it's going to be unbelievable. I've been dreaming of this since I'm a kid, um, so I can't okay. wait. <laughs> we spoke about with Vera the tough tests that she has given you at every opportunity when it comes to friendlies and maybe it is that goal against Scotland that shows the reward of it that you had very little time on the ball in that game but the second you did you were able to pick out the right pass at the right time does Amber give you enough credit for that? Uh, she does but I mean Nidge just said she don't get much credit but that header was that set me up for my first touch so um, I learned I paid it for that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean unbelievable um, it wasn't about my pass. I mean, the first touch from Amber was spectacular and that's what led her to the goal. So um, on the night, it was an absolute team effort and um, the girls gave absolutely everything. The back line, there was nothing getting through them that night and we all put our bodies on the line um, because we know how much we wanted it. And yeah, uh, we're going to the World Cup now, so we're very excited. <laughs> Neve, was there a moment throughout the campaign that really sort of instilled the belief in the group? Like, was there a particular game, a particular result? Yeah, I know uh, Katie mentioned Sweden was a huge game, but I think actually the win against Finland was a real kind of springboard for us to go there against a team that probably were expected to beat us to go there at their home ground and get that win. Um, Meg and Denise and the, with that fantastic leap um, in a header cross as well. So. There's been so many moments, Courtney, would say, like, it's, I think that Finland game, though, had a, had a well, for me, it had a massive uh, change in, in my mentality to, you know, what this could actually lead to. And then, obviously, yeah, the Sweden game was obviously massive as well. 
yeah, the Sweden game to be going toe to toe with the number two in the world. A draw that night. I remember the scenes afterwards. Both teams were, were delighted after the game. You, you rarely see that, but I think from an Irish point of view, you really show that you can go up against the very best ways. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think that was the first time they've taken uh, points. We uh, countries taken points off them in a qualification mm. match. Uh, at home so that that just shows you what a performance that was uh, and I think the team has grown uh, step by step since then as well everything's improved we're continuously getting better and, and that's you know we have to keep continue to get better as well because you know the World Cup's another level again so um, yeah it, it's great to have done it but yeah you have to look forward very quickly. Uh, Amber's goal got goal of the year at the FAI Awards I have to say it's absolutely outrageous that Niamh Fahey finally getting an international goal <laughs> was not included on that shortlist. Just how, many, how many games was it? Uh, I don't know how many games was it. Was it was 100? 100, <laughs> 100, 100. Someone said about, I'm disgusted. I don't know who was on the panel. I'll have to have a... I'll have to have We've her. never celebrated so much in our... No, I was, uh, Amber grabbed me and uh, I was kind of a bit shocked when she grabbed me because I was full sure it might have been given uh, as a bit of a handball. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> My Gaelic skills have served me well. Uh, <laughs> a goal and uh, yeah, and Courtney done the rest of me against Scotland. So fair play, Courtney. Another handball there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? <laughs> it's well, all going to happen for you at the World Cup. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> when we spoke to, uh, to Vera there about um, the resources that have been put into this team at long last, that, you know, getting what the players deserve. Louise, you were there front and centre you know, back in 2017 when a stand had to be made. You've seen how things have been transformed from your debut. Likewise, me from 2007. Can, can you talk to us just about that journey and how different... Even these two weeks have been to the setup you probably came into 14, 15, 16 years ago. Yeah, you can't, you know, you can't even compare it at all. I think um, one thing that hasn't changed is, and yeah, you're probably they're probably sick of us saying it, but the group and the kind of atmosphere that we create, you know, whether people are coming in or out or younger players coming up, you know, that's one thing that hasn't changed is the the mindset and the mentality and the you know, the pure pride of playing for your country. So, like, that's one thing that I think we've been able to keep going. And again, that was, you know, those standards were set, um, you know, years ago. So, I think for us then, it's it's just about, you know, it's about it. It's about parity. It's about, you know, we we know what's available. It's very openly, you know, to everyone to see. And I think for us, we wanted to perform at our best for our country. And I think that's you know, when you're at this level, I think surely that's the basics that you should be, um, you know, asking for or, in, you know, or entitled to, to, you know, to do the best for Ireland, be it man, woman, you know, anything. Um, you know, so the girls had really, you know, it wasn't just kind of a, <clears throat> oh, let's just try to do this. You know what I mean? It had been in talks and plans to make sure that we could just do the best, best for ourselves and, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's come forward now. And as you said, we have, you know, some of the, the best staff. Um, you know, we get to, to now train on some of the best pitches as well. How Tala is our home as well. Um, you know, the standards there is just, everything is raised and everyone just wants to bring, you know, with that, it breeds professionalism. And that's also where every single, you know, person that wants to come through wants to be at their best. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we've, we've given everything personally for us you need everything around it but I just think you know all the girls that have been through from you know 2017 before that and 2017 after have just wanted to be the best they can be and it has now resulted in this us going to World Cup. <laughs> You're definitely surrounded with, with so much talent Denise what is Katie McCabe like as a captain? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's honestly fantastic. Um, Katie came into this captain's role at a very young age, um, and it was must have been tough for her to take that pressure. But honestly, she's took it on her back, and she's led this team so well. She's led us to success, um, and yeah, just seeing how she's doing. She had a tough time before she went to Arsenal at Arsenal, where she had to leave and um, go on loan, play with Glasgow, and. That just shows the dedication from Katie that she wants to get better. Um, 
and she went back to Arsenal where she has captained Arsenal in Champions League um, and brought us to a World Cup as well. So she's amazing to have on the team. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, out of yourself and Katie, who's going to end up closer to Olivia O'Toole's goal-scoring record? <laughs> probably none of us. Probably Louise. <laughs> probably Louise. <laughs> Maybe Louise, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't Those know, headers. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Yeah. How do you get on up there now? <laughs> Uh, Maybe one of us. Steve, when we spoke to you uh, at Hamden Park after you were talking about credit union loans and the family were already planning. <laughs> oh, have the loans been approved? Have they all going? The She's ambassador now, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's, <laughs> I saw it, Joan. <laughs> Is everyone heading over? Uh, yeah, there's a few brother, sister, uh, her husband, and my little niece are going. And uh, there's uh, friends out there, family out there in Australia already. So. Uh, like everybody, there's friends, family, and, and all the rest in Australia. I think it's going to be some atmosphere out there. Are you already uh, doing your analysis on Australia, on Canada, on Nigeria, or is it...? I'll have to ask you, are we allowed to save you, or we have to keep all that stuff in-house? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>